Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, you know what? I should do a quick test. No, no, no. Hi. All right. All right, cool, it works. All right. Um, yeah, we are starting. I have the starting screen, but really I should have a, um, a screen that's for, like, everyone coming in but I don't have that anyway so how's the uh, how's the audio I made a couple changes and um, when I started OBS up apparently my mic was freaking out and I didn't know how to fix it so I unplugged it and plugged it back in which fixes most problems but I'm wondering how the audio is because I did turn up the background music a little bit. If it's too loud, let me know. I can turn it back down. It won't be a big deal. Uh, in the meantime, while we are waiting for that and people coming in. So, we are going to start in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the reason for that... Because the last time we did 20 minutes. This one's going to be... Um, I have a lot more written in my notes, so I want to start a little bit early because this one might might be longer, and I got jobs to apply for because I'm poor. I need money. <sighs> um, yeah. So, what else is happening? What's been happening with everyone? Hi, Alex. How you doing? Okay, it's a little bit loud. We'll turn it down. Thank you. And turn it down. Hear anything? Okay, hold on. Sorry, I had to. I, it disappeared on me. Uh, let's see what right there. Oh, we found there. Come on, come on, come on. Where are you? There you are. All right. Now it exists, but it's not. It, it should be very quiet. I only have this one. I like to keep it uh, just this. Oh, uh, we need different things. Um, w well, we are waiting for people to come in. Hopefully, someone chats. We don't. Uh, seemingly, meme is not here. So, and he was the other super Tommy. But yeah, uh, we'll probably start at about whatever time it is where you are at 40. Hmm. Anyway, so usually um, when this ends, I post the, uh, what do I post? I post the thing. What's the thing called? Um, I post the paper. But the paper is in editing hell right now, so. We like got a lot of black frames. That's not good. Um, I think if I close this off, I might cut down a little bit. Hopefully, the sound's coming in coming through fine. Uh, not sure why I have a bunch of dropped frames. That's a little annoying. But hopefully it steadies out. Um, 
yeah, anyway, so, what's been going on? Mall and Metal has been, uh, they've been playing God of War, and God of War Ragnarok is coming out. I'm excited. I can't play it, because, uh, I don't have anything to play it on, because I was stupid when I left home, and did not bring my PS4. Although, I don't know if I'd want to play it on a PS4, honestly. I think that'd be, uh, a disservice. And, um, yeah. You know, it's really weird, because I'm a little awkward right now, because I don't really know what to talk about. I bounce off the chat a tiny bit. But, um... Oh, I saw that new Green Lantern movie. Little animated movie. It was... I want to say disappointing, because Hal was assassinated. Bit too quiet. Okay. Thank you, good sir. How's that? Hope that's better. My mic's a little inconsistent, so... How's that? Let me bring it up a little bit. Alright, yeah, now we are in the yellow, so that should be awesome. Awesome. But yeah, so... Ooh, uh, what to do now? We got about two minutes. Um, hopefully more people come in. And this doesn't have to be a huge party. I'm going to do this anyway. But I like to have fun with it all. Gosh, man. Can you believe it's already November? And that Black Panther 2 is about to come out? I wish it wasn't. God, I just... I, uh, it's so frustrating because I know it's going to be bad, but a bunch of people are going to praise it because black. And, and I'm like, how about we don't? How about we, you know, judge it on its merits? See if it's good. But then again, a lot of black movies aren't good. Is that a hot take? I hope it's not because I think everyone knows that a lot of black movies are kind of shit. A lot of them are funny. <sighs> but is funny good? I guess it's like enduringly funny. Because I think a lot of romantic comedies are funny the first time. And then you watch them again. And then it's like, well, that's not as funny as the first time. So, yeah, I think as far as humor goes, it should be enduringly funny. Well, it will finish phase four, the fourth phase, so it must be good, right? Mm. Why is that one finishing phase four? I mean, I know why, but why that one? Like, it's, it's really weird because, oh, let me get that angle to my mouth. It's really weird because uh, usually the phases end with an ensemble movie, and this one will have... I guess, the people of Wakanda, but they won't have any, like, established heroes or villains. They will all be technically new in the MCU. Technically. Because we all know Shuri's going to be Black Panther. Which... It doesn't help anyone's case against Gary's really cringe saying. Because, well, they are all being turned to women. So, I don't know, it's really, it's really baffling to me. We should probably get started, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and finish this thought. It's really baffling to me that, um, we're ending on a Black Panther movie without the OG Black Panther even if he was recast, I think that would be better. And even then, I don't think this is the way to end a phase. It's really weird. And then... I'm not really excited about phase five. Like, I'm pretty burnt out. I'm not even burnt out on MCU or superheroes. I'm burnt out on shit. 
Like, why can't we just get a good movie? A decent movie. I'll take a decent one. And there's no Spider-Man in sight. We've done that. We've finished that arc. So that one's done. I don't know when Guardians of Galaxy 3 is coming out. Thor's garbage. Um, yeah, I think that's all we got. That's a bit depressing. Anyway, I think we should go ahead and get started. Hopefully some other people come in with their thoughts and opinions. So, um, yeah, it's a little quiet in here, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and get started. So the topic for today is, is sugar inherently or uniquely bad for you? And I think most people will know that it's not the case. Sugar is just sugar. But a lot of people have things to say about that. So, let's, get, uh, let's start the introduction. With the increase in popularity of low-carb diets, a new idea has sprung up. The idea is sugar is uniquely bad for you. Whether people say it is toxic or slowly killing you, this sentiment is growing. Of course, there are different levels of zealotry. Some people think that sugar is a necessary evil, and others think that all carbs must be avoided at all costs, and everything in between. Today, we will look at some research, some scientific conclusions, and some common sense ideas when it comes to these ideas and sugar. Basically, um, you know, there's all kinds of crazy ideas out there about what sugar does to the body uniquely. Like, we're, we're ooh, that was bad. Um, we are going to get into this, but essentially, the only thing sugar is really bad for is your teeth. And if you're trying to keep control of your calories. But you can, like, both of those are very manageable. Especially in moderation. But some people forget the teeth idea. They don't even go with that argument. They just say that any carbs are bad. And I've seen this sentiment growing. Mostly among the hyper... Uh... Hyper keto zealots and the super carnivore zealots. I I don't really see the merits in carnivore dieting, and of course, uh, people will bring up the like research or no, actually, I haven't seen many people bring up research on carnivore dieting at all. It's mostly anecdotes. Now. We haven't really put anecdotes in perspective on this channel. They've been put into perspective on other ones, but I think it is important for at least my lore to talk about what an anecdote really means in the grids. Sorry, I had an alarm set for 8.45 here, so, oops. If the mic picked that up, it might not have, I don't know. Um, but, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Time to wake up. You know what's funny? I have about five alarms. One at seven. One at seven thirty. One at eight forty-five. And then a couple at six forty-five a.m. But I don't know what days they are on. They're just random. I forget to turn them off. Um. Oh, we're going to put anecdotes in perspective. So, anecdotes and case studies, to be entirely clear, are not very reliable pieces of data. A, you can lie about either of them. It's very easy and it's very hard to prove. Like, oh, uh, for example, oh, my daughter ate a piece of cake every day and she never got fat. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Or, 
Oh, my son, he had a piece of cake once, and now he's 10,000 times his normal weight. It's like, okay, I don't know, what, what does that mean to me? Now, some people will take a, a, some people will take a case study or anecdote and act like it's actual evidence. I think um, Jordan Peterson did something like this. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I've just heard things about his lion's diet, which is specific to his daughter. I remember because she has a very, very, like, super rare condition where she can only eat meat without getting sick. And it's like, well, you can't take what your daughter does and apply it to everyone else. This happens in, in lifting all the time. In fact, there is this growing sentiment that is scary that the only argument you need is your physique. And it's like, uh, no, please stop. Like, I know it's like starting off as memes, but people are going to eventually take this very seriously. So that's concerning. Anyway, um, basically, there's this growing sentiment that sugar is uniquely bad. And number one, people already are terrified of sugar. It's a bit annoying, actually. Oh, I'm a little far away from my mic. I am so sorry. That's why my volume went back down. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, there's this like growing sentiment that sugar is uniquely bad for you. It's like if you eat sugar, you are going to gain a bunch of weight, which isn't necessarily true. But, like, what do we do about it? Because honestly, if sugar was the problem, obesity wouldn't be an issue. Like, it's very simple. It's like, well, sugar kills you, so you shouldn't eat sugar. It's like, okay, then why do we still have an obesity problem? Because if it's just that one thing, it's very easy to fix. But it's not that one thing. It's a very complicated problem. Sugar and salt are the worst enemies of mankind nowadays. Yes, it is extremely annoying. Because, A, we need both of those. We especially need salt. And sugar is found in most carbohydrates, which is the main fuel source for our body. I think I heard this one thing where someone was like, well, as a baby, our bodies are in ketosis, so we should go back to it. But if you're going to use that argument, shouldn't we also shit ourselves and, and scream until someone fixes a problem for us? I mean, half of Twitter does that anyway, but... Not half. All of Twitter does that anyway. But it's like, when you make these arguments, you... A lot of people don't think about these arguments they're making. It's like, well, ketosis is natural because that's where we started. It's like, no, that's not... That's not natural. I mean, sure, it's natural, but naturalistic fallacy, whatever. We eat carbs. We need carbs. Um, I remember rags... Uh, always say don't over carb and I didn't know what he meant by that because I've never heard that before and I finally he was on metal stream and I got him to explain it and he was like yeah you ever see athletes how they eat a bunch of carbs but they're never fat he was like yeah something something carbs make you fat if you overeat them and it's like you're almost there it's just overeating anything in general the reason why athletes eat so many carbs is because they need the energy. It restores their glyc <clears throat> glycogen, glycogen. No, it's glycogen. Yeah, glycogen. <sighs> glycogen stores basically their energy uh, reserves. They need a lot of carbs to keep that up because they're going to burn all that energy during their athletic events. But a lot of people are just like. They do, they're not even close. Like, Rags is really close. He's just, it's just overeating in general. Because, honestly, you can get fat off just eating fats. It's like, oh, I take out all my carbs. Why am I still getting fat? It's like, I don't know. 
maybe pouring a half a bottle of oil on all your salads is fucking you up pretty bad. Especially, especially since fats are 9 calories per gram. And carbs are 4 calories per gram. It's almost like it's a energy balance thing and not a uniquely this or that thing. I don't know. It's absolutely baffling. Anyway, let's move on. So, let's talk about what sugar is. Many people who believe sugar is uniquely bad for you do not understand what sugar is. Sugar can be defined as a sweet crystalline substance obtained from various plants, especially sugar cane and sugar beet, consisting of essentially sucrose and used as a sweetener in food and drink, which that is the most common understanding of what sugar is. Sucrose, you know, table sugar, is one molecule of glucose and and one molecule of fructose, which makes it a disaccharide. As implied by the name, a disaccharide is made up of two monosaccharides or two different sugars chemically bonded. Obviously, that would make a polysaccharide, often referred to as a starch. That makes a polysaccharide when multiple sugars are chemically bonded together. However, those are referred to as starches, like I said, which can be digestible or non-digestible, and they are often found in vegetables. So like your corns, oftentimes those are not are non-digestible starches, and that's why you see them when you shit. And potatoes are digestible starches. Pretty simple. Some people believe that fruit is unhealthy and causes weight gain because it has sugar. Emphasis on some, this is not a widespread understanding. And even fewer believe that vegetables are also uniquely bad for you because they have starches. But again, most people do not believe this. This is crazy fringe ideas. In fact, seemingly many people believe that sugar is bad, but the sugar in fruits and vegetables is not. And they would even go as far to say that honey is less bad than sucrose or your table sugar because it is natural. We will get to that. The idea that honey and sugar from fruit is automatically better for you than refined sugar is a form of appeal to nature fallacy or the naturalistic fallacy. Which basically means it is from nature, that means it is better, but in reality, that is not always true. Basically, uh, this section was just talking about what sugars are. A real baseline I'm sure you could go into hours and hours of lecture talking about what sugar is. Excuse me, I need a little sip. (sighs) Good coffee. (sighs) Basically, is sugar actually bad for you? It's a topic, but we can't talk about that without talking about what sugar is. Sugar is basically every carbohydrate. Now, how that is presented is different among them. Right, you have your sucrose, which is just your table sugar, but that can be found in a lot of stuff. Breads, cakes, all kinds of shit. Then you have your sugar and fruit, your starches, a lot of sugars and vegetables, all your carbs. They all have some amount of sugar in them. Because that's what the body uses. Um, Sugars are very fast to absorb into the body. 
carb digestion starts in the mouth. And you get a little bit of absorption there, but nothing significant. Most of it happens in the small intestine. Protein digestion mostly happens in the, in the stomach and fats kind of on the way to the small intestine. Uh, your gallbladder produces bile, which breaks down the fat, and then you absorb it. Blah, blah, blah. So, that's the process. But, yeah, essentially, almost every carb has some amount of sugars. Which is why I kind of have an issue with this idea that sugar is bad for you. Unless you go the carbs are bad for you. And in that case, you're just wrong, but at least you're consistent across the board. If you say sugar is bad for you, but fruits and vegetables aren't, then... You're almost there, but we need to tweak some ideas. Chat is a little shallow still, but that's okay. That's okay. No worries. We're going to check the Discord real quick. Well, that's all right. No one's there still. Oh, uh, shoot. We got to go back. We gotta go back. Me and my chat window. There we go. Woo! I don't actually know how many people are watching this. I think it's... At least when you're a small streamer, paying attention to the numbers is super detrimental. So, I'm not. I have no idea. There could be five. There could be ten. Or it could be just you, Alex, if you're still there. But uh, if I pay attention to that, I'll start getting all weird. So it's better not to. I mean, I guess you don't really need to watch. You would just listen. There's nothing on the screen. And no worries. If you're not, that's fine. Hey, no worries. You do, you, you do work. It's fine. Like I said, I'm not paying attention to the numbers because I think that's actually detrimental. Um, by not paying attention to the numbers, I can just kind of do this. I can have fun with it. If there's chat, if there's a chat. If there's not, there's not. Of course, when there's no chat, it kind of messes up with my chat sections because I built in little times to talk with the chat. And I don't want to just go through and read all of this, but I can have discussions with myself. Honestly, I do it every day, every anyway, like literally every day. Sometimes I'll be like, "Oh, this was a topic on EFAP that I didn't think they covered well," and this is what I would say. Or it'll be a video, and I'll be like, "Well, this is what I would say," or it will be a story idea, and same thing. So it's no biggie. Anyway, let's move on. So, uh, I don't regret anything. So, if sugar is always bad for you, we're taking this idea and running with it, then what about fruits and vegetables? Some people believe that all sugar, and carbs for that matter, are bad for you and lead to weight gain. Many of these people are keto or carnivore zealots. Notice I said zealots, not dieters or... I guess dieters would be the word. Because the normal people on keto, they might think that sugar is bad for you, but usually they just need a small correction. Where it's like, yeah, keto's fine and it's a good way to lose weight. Just sugar's not uniquely bad for you. Like, Change that mindset. Because that's wrong. But if you don't want sugar, like a lot excess sugar in your diet, that's also fine. Like the the idea of this is not to say everyone should eat a bunch of sugar. The idea is for people to be more educated, because ultimately, that's what I'm pushing here. You don't have to not be on keto to lose weight or be healthy. But when you take the essentially. 
I'm trying to fight back against this idea that there are good foods and bad foods. Because that can lead to eating disorders. And eating dis- and eating disorders are by far the deadliest mental illness. Not only that, but it is absolutely preventable. I'm not saying it's hard to prevent. Well, I am. Because... Uh, You'd have to combat a lot of misinformation, a lot of people's ideas being pushed. But it is preventable. It's not like ADHD where you are born with that shit and you have to deal with it. You don't have to have an eating disorder. And there's other prob disorders and stuff. And obviously the show will not just be about, this episode will, but this show won't just be about nutritional topics. But, you know, by saying this food's good and this food food is bad or sugar will kill you and if you don't, you'll live longer, that can create an eating disorder. You might be okay and you might say, well, that's not my fault that why a person developed an eating disorder, but it is because you're just spreading misinformation that is affecting them negatively. When you could have the right information and be like, no, I use keto, Um, you know, sugar's fine in moderation, but I don't have the self-discipline for it or I'm not really interested in trying to manage it. Just, you know, that's my choice. You can use flexible dieting or whatever. And that's essentially where I want people to get to where they can justify their choice without damaging other people's choices. Because if we can avoid damaging other people's choices and just give them straight up like, yes, this was my decision. I did it based on my needs. If you can do something else, that's fine. Because ultimately, flexible dieting is the best choice, but not everyone can do it. You need a lot of self-discipline to not eat a whole pack of cookies every fucking day. I know that sounds ridiculous, but for a lot of people it is. Like, honestly, the truth. So, for those people, it might be better just not to buy the cookies in the first place. Just don't even have them in your house. Some people, it's like, I'd rather just not eat that many carbs. And we'll get into other issues with this mindset later. Anyway, uh, back to, back, ah, I dropped my clone. Back on topic. See, this is why I need a new, another monitor. So I can just have it up on the screen. But I don't have room for it. I have a secondary monitor, but it's older. I think it's like 900 by 600p. And it's real shit. Oh, what's up? What's up, Roadblock? Chilling. Just doing this little show. A new show. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. But it is a new show. I'm trying to. Switch it up, be a little less, um, a little less rigid. Just talk about research topic, write about it, put it up. Yeah, what's up, dude? All right, we gotta get back on point B. Okay. So we talked about keto zealots and carnivore zealots saying all carbs are bad. Unfortunately, for their arguments, every study supports that proper consumption of fruits and vegetables are inversely associated with obesity and heart disease. Basically, that means... uh, That means people who eat enough fruits and vegetables tend to live longer and tend to have less disease. So saying all carbs are bad is automatically wrong. As well as saying all sugar is bad. But that, again, those are really fringe ideas that I want to address. Oh. That's a good one. I might call that. That might be the name of the show. The Shiver... If I could say it. I think that'll be the name of the show. That's... You always go with names, Roadblock. Shiver Session. Speech impediments preventing me from saying it, but it's a good name. 
Uh, I think that's the end of that section. Let me have one more section, which will be a long one. Um, but yeah, so essentially that section was kind of short. Just explaining that the idea that all carbs are bad doesn't really make sense. Because if we look at the data, there is no study. I mean, there might be. Let's, let's not say no study. But let's say there are some fringe studies that we're not going to include. Any proper study looking at fruit and vegetable intake with health is inversely related. Well, no. Those are positively related. Basically, if you eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, you will be healthy. Now, people on the other side of that, you know, the vegans might misinterpret or purposely um, misconstru misconstrue that as, well, if you eat meat, that is bad for you. And it's like, no, not necessarily. Essentially, not eating meat is a little bit better. But if you eat plenty of fruits and vegetables and you eat plenty of meat, you usually have better health outcomes than if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and a little bit of meat. So what does that actually mean? We don't know because, and I will get into this a little bit later, but essentially it's like, well, we know that if you just eat a lot of good whole foods, you'll be good. But it's not entirely, it's not entirely clear if it's just the foods you eat or also your habits. Because let's be honest, a lot of, carnivore people or and a lot of keto people not all of them but a, a fair bit they don't really have great health habits anyway so we don't know if it's just oh well they're eating this so therefore these things happen it might be oh well they're also like sitting down all the time it's very complicated essentially just like saying sugar is naturally bad is wrong technically speaking because fruits and vegetables exist. Shiver session. That's a good name. I'm going to call it that. Yeah, shiver session. I love it. All right. Last big section. Okay, this is a lot of reading, so stay with me. So, let's talk about refined sugar, or sucrose, if you will. Isn't refined sugar somehow worse than any other form of sugar? Well, outside of being really easy to add to foods, which adds a lot of calories, depending on how much you add, and being damaging to enamel, which, obviously, no, there's nothing worse about it. Your body doesn't really recognize the difference between sugar from fruit sugar from plants, and refined sugar. It's all basically the same. I think fructose is technically the worst, but it's like it's like saying getting punched is somehow way worse than getting slapped. It's like, eh, maybe, but not by much, if it is. It's all pretty much the same. There's like a small difference. The worst culprit of sugary foods is soda, since they, since they usually have a high amount of sugar, and that's about it, and carbonation, which carbonation isn't great for your teeth, but we're talking about sugar, we're not talking about carbonation, <laughs> whatever. But this isn't really a problem for people who have decent self-control. One soda every week or so, maybe like two a week, three a week, you know, a small number. Or if the person like takes into account the, the soda they drink during the day and their daily calories. Will like, it'll negate the caloric surplus. So basically, if you have like a soda every week or so, it's not going to affect your weight. If you have like three a week still won't affect your weight. 
if you have one like every day, but you take into account like, oh, this soda's two hundred calories, I'll, you know, I'll make sure I don't eat that snack later. You're fine. You're still pretty much in whatever um, caloric maintenance range you would normally be in. The problem comes when you chug a bunch of soda and you don't think about it. Because, let's be honest, soda isn't really filling. You drink it, you're still hungry, you go eat. You, you, you didn't really do anything there. And that's how it, like sugar adds up and adds a bunch of calories. It's not that you're eating sugar. It's that a lot of times sugar is really easy to consume and you don't really think about it. Especially when it's in the form of soda. Now, fruit juices as well, but fruit juices are a bit better because usually they have vitamins and nutrients and antioxidants. Still very easy to overconsume, but they're not just sugar and water. It's not the sugar that's the problem. It's the fact that it's so easy to overconsume. Uh, I covered that. Of course, um, if people switch to a diet soda, this problem is negated altogether. But outside of the tiny minority, diet soda's fine. It's just soda with minimal to no, no calories. It's not worse for you, it's just another option. If you have no self-control, if you cannot cut out soda in your diet or moderate yourself, diet soda is a better decision in that case because now you can drink the soda you want without the excess calories ultimately would it be better to just not have soda yeah but you know i guess that's kind of the thing it's like if you don't have to have soda don't have it if you have to try to moderate if you can't moderate switch to diet soda Uh, uh, looks like we have a question before we move on to the next section. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what's up, sir? Share a site. Any problematic effects from things like bang drinks that have no calories and no sugars? Um, I don't think they have a lot of caffeine, which I mean, that's like a maybe maybe not type thing uh i don't know anything that's particularly bad about bang except for they're kind of lying i know they have super creatine on their on their cans which is not creatine at all it's a different blend altogether but um Not that I know of. I'm not going to say there are no problematic effects like that. I just don't know them. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember particularly. There's a lot of things I have issues with the company of. Like using underage girls for marketing at one point. But. Yeah. I just. I do not. I don't remember. Is there anything wrong with them? At least health-wise. Like everything, if you consume them in moderation, they should be fine. Uh, I remember being told to avoid regular sugar and go for fruit or corn sweetener for losing weight. Yeah, that's naturalistic fallacy. Oh, it's from, it's from nature, so it's automatically better. It's like, no. Although fruit is inversely <laughs> related to ga gaining weight. But that's because fruit has... Like, it has the sugar, but it also has the fiber, the vitamins, the nutrients. So, the good thing about fruit is that fruit is incredibly hard to overconsume. You eat, like, five apples, you're probably full. I don't know if that's true. I've never had five apples in one sitting. But... Usually, after I have an apple, I'm like, okay, my hunger has been satiated. I can go on for a couple more hours. 
your body doesn't really even know the difference between regular sugar and sugar from fruit or corn sweetener. It's like, ah, it's, it's sugar. It's energy I can use. Oh, they are lying about creatine altogether. Yeah, I, I didn't remember. I remember looking it up not too long ago. I think it's in one of my blog posts. But I... It slipped my mind a bit. I just knew they were lying about it because I looked into it. I'm like, no, this isn't true at all. None of it is. They're just putting creatine on there. Because uh, I forgot what it was. It was like technically by definition of a chemical compound, it is creatine. But it's not creatine. I think. I don't know. No, actually, I think it's just the name. So they can't really get sued. But it's not creatine. It's just like by the loosest definition they can call it creatine. Hello, Capper. Wait, Capper. What a weird name. Capper. Huh. I like it. Yeah, apples and fruits and vegetables, they have a bunch of fiber in them and other stuff. So you can't really overconsume them. So it's like, oh, yeah, but they have sugar in them. It's like, yeah, but they also have other stuff. It's not just Casper, but Polish. Got it. Right one, it's not large enough dose to do anything anyway. Yeah. That as well. Yeah, you need a decent dose of, of uh, creatine, and you also have to, like, saturate your body with it. So you have to have it every day, which I don't know who would want to bang energy if it had creatine in it. In it. If they weren't lying, I don't know anyone who would want a bang energy every day. Hey, what's up, Steven? That's so weird actually saying your name. Steven. Uh, that's weird. I don't know if I like that. But I don't really know how to pronounce your last name. I just always thought of it in my head. It's like con connect me. Connect me. Hello, hello, hello. All this is telling me is that I should have started my stream at 9. Apparently 8.30 was too early. Okay, so next time I do this, I don't know when. Again, like episode one, these are completely random. Whenever I finish a paper, I just do it. I just make this up, which the paper isn't even done, but the information's there. So might be next week, might be the four months. Who knows when I get passionate around another paper. Although I do have that little survey I did, which I should interpret soon. Close. I was close. Koniki. Is it Koniki? That would be the only other thing I could... It, it has to be Koniki. Because that sounds like it makes sense. Anyway, I'll look after this next part. So, we have three more section, subsections in this section. So, let's go ahead and get to it. Several reviews found a weak connection between... Several reviews found a weak connection between sugary foods and obesity. The link almost always appears to researchers when they find habits. So, essentially what that means is they will study if eating sugary snack foods has an actual link to obesity. And usually that link is weak if there is one. But when they look at habits... That is usually when. That's usually when the link is established. So saying sugar is linked to obesity is wrong. It's habits. Because again, you can get just as fat pouring oil all over your salads. Not saying oil is bad. And in fact, usually that is a healthy fat, but fat still has nine calories per gram so putting a lot of fats on your foods that will catch up to you just as easily as sugar will it might even be worse because a lot of people are like well this is a lot of people are like well this is a healthy fat so i should be okay but it's like ooh, it is but you know calm down don't put 16 gallons of oil on your salad. There's a story from Bio... I think it was Biolane. 
I know I criticized anecdotes earlier, but this is a funny story. So, um, I forgot who, who he was talking about, but apparently there was this guy he knows. And he was a, uh, he was a keto dude. And, you know, he was gaining weight while he was on keto. Now, here's the thing. He was dumping oil on his salads. But he didn't register that that was the problem. Just dumping it on there. Not like a moderate amount to give it flavor. Just dumping it on there. And so he started to blame the fact that he was eating lettuce. Obviously misinformed. So just dumping it on there. And then Biolaine had to explain to him. That I was like, yeah, no, it's because you're dumping oil on your salad. It's like fats are good, but they still have a lot of calories. You got to calm down with them. Might be healthier, but you're just adding a bunch of extra calories. So, yeah, again, sugar is not unique. Okay, you can. The only one that's technically unique is protein because that's even harder to overconsume and get fat. The other two are much easier. Let's see. Oh, building on what I just said. Research also finds that there are more dangerous food habits than the overconsumption of sugar. Such as the overconsumption of red such as the overconsumption of red meats and processed meats. Overconsumption, not a normal amount. Right? I mean like that's all you eat. However, and this is a criticism I have of a lot of red meat and processed meat um, disadvocates, would that be the word? Who knows? Let, let's say that's the word. Disadvocates. However, it is unclear if the problem is eating the meat, the red meat and processed meat, or if the people who eat a lot of it already have bad habits. So basically, it's like, is it, there is a connection here, but we don't know if it's correlation or reverse, co not correlation, the wrong word, if that is the cause or if it's reverse causation, where, or confounding the variable. We don't know. We just know there's a link there, but we don't entirely, we can't put A and B and C and F together. We just know they are somehow related. Excuse me. All right. Researchers have also found... I should have put a different word here. In addition, researchers found that the source of sugar slash the quality of the carb matters way more than the actual sugar. Like we talked about with sodas. Sugary sodas are considered one of the worst because they don't really have any nutritional value. It's just sugar and water and flavoring and carbonation. So basically, you're just eating sugar. But there are times where that's useful. Like, people don't do this, but it would be very useful. If you just drink a soda before, like, lifting or doing a sprint, why is that? Why would that be okay? Sugar is very fast absorbing. It, it even starts in your mouth. It's not completely done in your mouth, but it starts there. So if you just have sugar and water that is very easy to absorb, that's great for like quick energy. So technically, if you were an athlete, drinking soda before working out wouldn't be a bad idea. Again, there's like... it's. The main thing in soda is still water. But not a lot of people do that. A lot of people drinking a ton of soda probably don't even get enough activity in anyway. So that is just an example of how it would be okay. On the other side of that, we have fruits. We have yogurts. We have whole grain breads. Even the sugary... Even sugary cereal has some benefit. 
obviously you have the type with extra fiber, um, extra other things, whole grain cereals. Those are even better. But even like your sugary cinnamon toast crunch. That has some nutritional benefit beyond just the sugar. It's usually what the sugar comes from that causes the problem, not the sugar itself. It's a lot like calories. In fact, it is just calories. Uh, lots of people will say a calorie is not a calorie. If you eat calories from this food, it's somehow different than this food. When that's not the case. Calories are just a measurement of energy. Sugar is just a carb. Sure, you can add it to things, but depending on what it comes with will determine how detrimental it might be. But sugar is just sugar. If you ate in a caloric deficit of just sugar, a professor did this to prove a point to his students, by the way. He just ate junk food, but he was in a caloric deficit. He still lost weight. He still got healthier. Because ultimately... Being obese, why do I say being obese? There's no T. Being obese is one of the worst things you could do for your body. So even if you just lost weight by just eating sugar, you would be better off than um, brain fart. You would be better off than being obese. That's crazy, isn't it? It's like, you know, if you're not obese, maybe these small decisions matter more. But as long as you get away from that, you'll probably be okay. So, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and go to the conclusion. That way we can hang out and talk a little bit and I can answer chat. In conclusion... Sugar is not uniquely bad for you. Where the sugar comes from matters more than just eating sugar. Even if the source of sugar is not even good, sodas, cookies, super sugary cereals, moderation is key. If you eat it sometimes, you'll be fine. If you, if you eat 75% healthy, you will be fine. The push for less and less carbs may actually have a bigger detriment to public health as a whole. In the not too far past, there was a push for low fat. Everything was low fat. Low fat yogurt. Low fat butter? I don't remember if that was a thing. I just remember low fat was everywhere. But what happened with that? and some of you might find this really interesting, is when the low-fat push was being, well, pushed, less people were consuming fat, and thus less excess calories, and less calories in general, was coming from fat. However, more calories were being consumed in general. So, while... Fat consumption and excess calories from fat was going down. People were eating more. And if I had to guess why that is, when you tell someone that this food is particularly healthy, they tend to eat more of it. Because it is healthy. Therefore, I should eat more. It's like oils in food. Because people are told these are healthy fats, they put more of it in their food. Now, this is not an appeal to say you shouldn't put oils in your food or you shouldn't do this or that. The idea here is that by creating a dichotomy of foods, like this one's good, this one's bad, you create different bad habits. And this could lead to eating disorders, which is the worst case scenario. But even then, you're creating different bad habits. All sugar's bad. 
Therefore, we can eat as much fat as we want. Why am I getting fat? Because you're just eating as much fat as you want. There's a happy middle ground here. Even if you're on a restrictive diet, there's a happy middle ground. Lots of restrictive diets have cheat days. There's research that shows people who have dedicated cheat days eat more calories in general than people who do flexible dieting. Basically, moderation. Now, that might be a point of criticism, but even the restrictive diets with, with even the restrictive diets with cheat days, they are moderating what they what they are doing. They have control. It's like I eat healthy six days a week. I pick out on the seventh. Is that great? No, but it's better than just saying, "Well, fats are good, so I'm just going to eat all of it." The entire point of this is to push back against the dichotomy of foods. This food's healthy, this one's not. No. You have healthy habits, you have unhealthy habits. Eating a box of cookies every day is a unhealthy habit. Trying to moderate your intake of calories from different sources is a good habit. Excuse me, been talking a lot. Got a lot of stuff going on in my a lot of stuff going on in my face. Basically what I'm saying is we need to move away from this idea that there are good foods and bad foods. You have to find a happy medium for everyone. Some people it might be keto and that's fine. But I don't I would hate for those keto people to tell people that honestly shouldn't even be on keto to get on keto because oh it's so effective when we know a good portion of the weight you lose on keto is water weight that's what happens not saying it can't be effective but your fast progress a lot of it's water weight calm down it's a fine choice flexible dieting the best choice but not everyone can do it that takes a lot of self-discipline and control I'm not even great at it. I'll make cookies. I'll eat all of them in one day. Every single one. I won't feel bad about it either. I'll do it. That's not good. But I do it. We're not all perfect. But we gotta get away from this dichotomy of foods. If we can get away from that. If we can you know, teach people to find their way to moderate. However it is. I think we will have a much healthier society as a whole. Doesn't even matter what country you're in. Unless you're starving. If you're in a starving country, then um, eat whatever. Just stop being starving. Go back to the other side. And the reason why I'm not really going into like, oh, well, what about the people who under eat and all this other stuff? is because that's rarer. And also this episode is about sugar. We got to stop doing this whole sugar's bad thing. Sugar is sugar. Does sugar usually come with foods that aren't super healthy? Sure. But as long as we chill on the sugar, you know, be like, hey, you know, I'm eating mostly fruits and vegetables. I'm going to have a piece of cake today. It's like, you're fine. Hey, I have a soda every day, but the days I have a soda, I also try not to have excess snacks. You're fine. Hey, I switched to diet soda because I I can't control myself with soda. Fine. Hey, I pretty much cut out all of the sugar in my diet. Uh, That's not a great idea because a lot of that sugar also comes with fiber, which is, again, inversely related with poor health, health, health outcomes. But, you know, just let's chill on the misinformation. Anyway, that is the end of the show, so we're going to catch up with chat, answer questions, have a good time until I wrap it up. Because this episode is way shorter. Mostly because I didn't get a chance to intersperse with chat as much, which is fine. Uh, where were we? 
Let's go. Uh, I think we were at. It's the wrong kind of, pro of creatine. Even if it was the right one, it's not enough. It's not a large enough dose to do anything. Yeah. Because I think um, the actual. What's it called? It's called super creatine. But it's. I think they call it a proprietary blend. Which means they can put whatever. They can put whatever amounts of what they say is in there. So even if, again, it's not creatine. It's a bunch of bullshit. But um, even if there's like a little bit of creatine in there, they might put like the bare minimum for it to be in there. Quotes around that. And say that's good. Like if you're looking at supplements, watch out for proprietary blends. Because that is where companies get you. They'll be like, oh, well, this stuff's in here. It's like, yeah, but how much is actually in there? It's a way to get around, like, using effective dosages. Real sketchy stuff. So if you're looking at supplements, definitely watch out for proprietary blends. It's like Casper, but Polish. Oh, that does make sense. This one, five grams for every morning is like at 5 a.m. for life. Yeah, pretty much. You got to do it all the time. Keep it up. It's like connect the knee. Connect the knee. Connect the knee. Ah, I think I got it. Connect the knee. Now, I am, now, now it's in my head. Now I will remember that. Cause that's kind of clever. Cause that's pretty clever. Connect the knee. Connect the knee. I mean, if I could say it, it would be it would work. Connect the knee. BSN micronized creatine. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to look it up. I, it sounds familiar though. I might have heard of it. Meme isn't. Yeah, meme isn't around for his funny jokes. Did I not get it? Am I still off? I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Because I'm close. It's, it's connect. Connect knee. Connect. Con, connect knee. Connect knee? Okay. Okay, next time we're online together. Tell me. Because I'm... I, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the unique last names that always get people. Especially me. I don't know how to say it. Uh, so supplements are not actually good for you. Uh, that's a weird one because I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Obviously they're unnecessary unless like you need them. Like protein shakes, unnecessary if you get enough protein every day, but not everyone does. Um, and proprietary blends, they have to tell you what's in the blend. I think. I'm pretty sure they have to tell you what's in the blend. But they don't have to tell you how much of each thing is in the blend. So, uh, let, let's use beta alanine, for example. Because that's something a lot of people know about. Let's say, I don't know if C4 does this. But let's use C4 as an example. This is not shitting on your company, C4. If you see this, leave me alone. Okay, I'm using you as an example. Of, some, of a theoretical example. Lots of theories and hypotheticals. Let's say C4 was like, we have this new explosive proprietary blend of beta alanine and glucose. So if that was the case, they don't actually have to tell you how much beta alanine's in there. It could be like a microgram and the rest is glucose. But because it is a proprietary blend, they don't actually have to tell you that. If it wasn't, they would have to tell you, yeah, it's like a micro, microgram. If that makes sense. But not all supplement companies are like that. Um, a lot of them are pretty decent. They'll tell you exactly what's in their thing. Uh, but yeah, a lot of them are unnecessary. You don't need them. But, you know, if you decide to get them... Or there is actually 
something in your life that you're just not getting naturally. I guess naturally is a weird word. There's something in your life that you're not getting from your typical diet. Then, yeah, supplements are fine. Just find a good one. Uh, I think more plates, more dates. I think his stuff's pretty good. I've never heard anything bad about it. But it's a little expensive for my taste. Just a little bit. So, yeah, just, it depends. It depends, depends, depends. That's the answer for most things in health. It depends. And then you have to give more context, and then you get an actual answer. But yeah, this episode's a little bit shorter. It's, it's a lot shorter. It's not two hours. And my throat's still dry. Um, I think coffee was the wrong choice of drink for this, because I don't know if you've noticed, but near the end, I could barely talk. And I've heard that dairy is not great for the voice. So, and I put cream in my coffee. So, next time will definitely be a tea. I'll use tea. But my voice is less awful. And I mean, like, tired and hurting. So, yeah. Anyway, the paper for this should be out within a week or two. Again, it's an editing hell. Uh, I wrote it, but I didn't really have organization for it. So I'll go back and add the link in the description when it's done. Uh, yeah, so paper will be done sooner or later. I don't know when the next episode of this will be. Because I have the, the EFAP health, health survey thing. But I don't know how long it will take me to interpret that data. Because there are several questions I need to throw out. Because uh, apparently British people don't know how to follow instructions. And if you don't use the word they use, they decide that thing doesn't exist. And they also cannot use Google. So I have to throw out some questions and interpret the data. I also have an idea of burnout because, frankly, burnout's a thing. Whether it's work or making videos or exercise, you get burnt out on it. And I think talking about how to avoid burnout would be super helpful for, like, not just some people, but, like, pretty much anyone in anything. Unless you're an OnlyFans girl. I mean, they might even have a burnout. You might get burnt out of flicking a bean on the internet. I don't know. Or selling bathwater. That might be a thing. If it is, woo. Not woo. Yes, woo. I didn't think that joke through. Bars. But yeah, next episode. Don't know when it will be. Um, it'll happen at some point. Just know it will happen. Just don't know when. Uh, it'll, it'll either be on the survey experiment I did or burnout or some third topic that I come up with out of nowhere because someone says something kind of stupid about health. Because there's also the whole thing that's coming up where people are like, hey, if you're not huge, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, oh, God, I hope that doesn't like become a thing. Because there are plenty of, of examples of people who are huge and are just the dumbest people I've ever met. Not even met, just on the internet. So that might be one. It's one of those three, probably. Uh, but yeah, so I will see everyone around. People make that argument? Uh, well, yes and no. So there are people who actually make that argument. And there's a lot of memes. And you know how memes go, right? Things start off as memes, and then people start taking that seriously. And then people make that argument. And then it's like, holy crap, let's stop. Because it starts off as a straw man, and lots of people don't know what a straw man is. Then it becomes memes, then people take it seriously, then it becomes an argument, and then so on and so forth, and it goes down the rabbit hole. And then we're in a point where, um, apparently, if you're not big, you don't know what you're talking about. And then you're listening to Mike O'Hearn say, you only need duck eggs and 20 minutes of cardio every week to be huge. Where did he get those numbers from? Up his ass. Absolutely.
That's where he got them from. And no one, and there's still people who think he's natural. I don't know how you think anyone who's that big and swole at like almost 60 is natural, but like if you have a like an eight pack at like almost 60, I have a lot of questions for you. Oh yeah, do you even lift, bro? I remember when that was a fun joke that everyone did. I mean, it still is, but eventually it won't be. At this rate. But yeah. That might be a topic I cover. There's only a paper that's like halfway done. But it's like. It's not a research paper. It's definitely an opinion piece. But man. It's just. Things are gonna go crazy. Things are getting crazy, cause it's like everything. Everything's on a pendulum, right? One point we're way over here, and the next point we're way over here, and really the answer is somewhere in the middle. But we we're we're, we're missing that middle. Um, so last review before we end. Uh, next time, one of those three topics I talked about, probably it could be a fourth. I don't know. I just do these when I feel like it. I don't want to have a schedule because that's what happened to the last show. I had a schedule and I started to hate that schedule and things came up and then the show died. So no schedule. This will happen when it happens. Uh, number two... We're using tea next time because apparently any kind of dairy just messes my whole face up after a while. So that's no bueno. What's number three? Number three, we're starting at nine. Nine a.m. Central Standard Time. So I don't know when it will be, but it probably won't be at least for a couple weeks. I know this one. Well, no, this one did not happen a week after. It happened a little bit later. But yeah, I'll probably talk about it. Anyway, I gotta start applying for more jobs because apparently um, no one wants to hire me yet. Which is frustrating. Because I need money. Because there's a bunch of games I want. And also, you know, bills. But that's totally secondary. It's not like the main thing I need money for. So, yeah. I gotta go apply for more jobs. And um, also I drink coffee. So my stomach's about to die. I got a busy day ahead of me. So... Thank you for everyone who showed up. Thank you for everyone who's going to watch this later. I appreciate you spending some time here, you know, watching what I have to say. I hope you learned something. Um, I almost think I should have a bell at the end of this. Ah, uh, whatever. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, thanks, Roadblock. Um, I'm looking for a remote job, and I, to be fair, I have like a hundred applications in waiting. I'm just waiting to hear back from a lot of them. Like real big net. I did health coach stuff and all that. I could technically get a job at the grocery store really close, but it's almost winter where I am, and I'm not gonna walk all the way over there in like negative eight degrees. No, I'm I'm kidding. Negative twenty degrees. I'm not doing that. So, going for a remote job. If it was summer, I'd probably work there. But, yeah, so. We're just going to keep working. I'm going to keep working. I'll see y'all next time or in any of the discords I'm in. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I will talk to all of you soon. Maybe. Hopefully. Who knows? Um, later.